our first book we are getting from the library, so let's go inside. I just got out of the library and I got Once Upon a Broken Heart. I just realized that I actually do not know the plot of this book at all. I got it purely because I've been seeing a ton of like other booktubers recommending it, saying it's really good. So I trust them. So I just like impulse put it on hold of my library and we're reading it for my virtual book club, which is pretty fun. I like flipped through the first few pages in the library and like they're so pretty. Like I love this title page. The dedication. Oh my gosh. I used to like never really read the dedications, but I've come to like really appreciate really good dedications. And this one says, for anyone who has ever made a bad decision because of a broken heart. Our main character Evangeline has always believed in true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another which is heartbreaking and I see where we get our broken hearts and desperate to stop the wedding she strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked prince of hearts and like that line got me so excited because I read the cruel prince not long ago and there's like a very similar description of him like literally the first book is called the cruel prince and the second one is called the wicked king the fact that this guy is a prince the prince of hearts and he's described as charismatic and wicked just like prince cardan and the cruel prince gets me so excited. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. After Evangeline's first promised kiss, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game. And that sounds really good. I just read the first two pages and it's from the POV of a bell. Yes, a bell, like a ding ding, you know, ding ding ring ding. A bell, a literal bell. Like that is so ridiculous, so absurd. I love it. I feel like that's such a good start. Like I feel like and hope that this book is gonna be like so fun and creative because those first two pages were. If spring is the season that wakes me alive and fall is the season to contemplate life. Oh. Before I tell you guys more about my thoughts on this book, I really want to tell you guys about Brilliant.org, which is an online learning platform that offers interactive courses in math, science, computer science, and so much more. They literally have thousands of courses. It's crazy. My favorite part of Brilliant is how interactive the lessons are. It has been proven that interactive learning is six times more effective than passive learning. In their lessons you do things like create programs with drag and drop coding or interact with graphs and charts. I think Brilliant is perfect if you're in school and want to do some extra learning or if you're out of school like me and potentially want to change jobs or grow in knowledge within your current fields. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days go to brilliant.org slash just and the first 200 of you will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Good morning. I have been really obsessed with this book. I read so much last night. I read so much this morning. I honestly forgot I was filming and to update you guys and I'm now on page 198 and it's just so good. I like can't stop reading it. I've been ignoring all my responsibilities today. It just like, it started off just like in the thick of it, I feel like. And a lot of times I feel like fantasy books, especially series, have like so much like world building and like stuff to explain about like the laws of their world and universe and creatures and stuff. But this book was really just like thrust us in to the plot, which I appreciate. I've also never read a Stephanie Garber book before and she has so many good quotes in this book and like really good metaphors. Like, let me read you some. The murmurs were like villains at the end of a story. They just wouldn't die. Another good one about how she's like really drawn to the Prince of Hearts. It says, it was no wonder waves were always crashing. They must have hated the pull as much as she did. Okay, and one more that's describing the Prince of Hearts. Devastation made of hair as blue as dark ocean waves and lips sharp Okay, cat. Devastation made of hair as blue as dark ocean waves and lips sharp as cracked glass that would delightedly cut her. Like just such like vivid like descriptions and metaphors. It's very cool. Okay, I am gonna keep reading and I don't know if I can finish it today, but I feel like I can get pretty close because now I just have 200-ish pages left. Sweet, so I guess I'll just put on my favorite sweater and say goodbye to summer. I 
I made it to part three and it's called chaos, which is very ominous. Like things have already been kind of crazy. I'm not ready for them to be officially labeled chaos. Basically what's happened so far is like I said when I was explaining the summary of the book is that Evangeline makes a deal with Jax and he asks for three kisses in exchange. Two of the kisses have happened so far. I have like a guess for like this scenario of the third kiss. I don't know if it's right. And also I ship them so hard. Like the more character is like brooding, like kind of cruel, like the more I just want to see their like sweet soft side and the more I want the characters to get together. That's probably like so twisted because in the real world you should not root for like closed off, like enemies to lovers kind of characters. But in books, it's my kryptonite. I'm on page 312 and there are so many like surprising moments every few chapters like I'm always like okay after this chapter I'm gonna stop reading and then I get to the end of the chapter and I'm like I have to keep reading to find out what's gonna happen. I honestly kind of feel like I can finish this tonight like I'm getting really obsessed and I don't quite know like where the overall plot is going which is kind of the best feeling because I'm like this could go in so many directions and I'm intrigued to find out which direction we're going in. Also, like something about romances where there's less given to me makes me crave them more. Like so far, like nothing really romantic has happened, but I'm like, I can feel the romantic subplot. Like when is there going to be more of it? I have to read to get more of it. It's like torturous. Hello. So it is like a week later, I know. This was supposed to be reading fantasy books for a week, but I have been reading fantasy books since I last saw you guys. The reason why it is a week later is because I finished Once Upon a Broken Heart, was obsessed and I was like, I, I can't just move on and start a different fantasy book. So I just binge read the second book in the series, Ballad of Never After. I'm obsessed with this series and I cannot believe, I cannot believe that the third book doesn't come out till October. I did not realize that. I wouldn't have started this series if I knew that the series wasn't complete. That's like my new rule for myself is like when I start a series, I just want to finish it all the way through. I feel like that makes it so much more enjoyable. I have a bad habit of abandoning series. So making sure that I read all the books in a row means I won't abandon it. But here I am again, having to pause in the middle of a series because the next book isn't out yet. Anyway, my review, um, six freaking stars, six out of five stars. I'm so obsessed. I love Evangeline and Jax. Jax, like, whew, love that man. It's such a complicated character because you never kind of know if he's like the villain or the love interest or the hero or like what he is. The pain I feel wanting Jax and Evangeline to get together is excruciating. I wrote in my Goodreads review of both of these books that the world and vibe of the series feels like a magical fairy tale but without the guarantee of a happy ending and I feel like that just really sums up the feeling you get when you read this book. Like so magical and fairy tale but like kind of dark too and kind of like this could all end so terribly and yeah i loved these first two books if you couldn't tell okay this is every fantasy book that i own but haven't read yet i counted and it's 19 books which is crazy that's so many i need to stop buying so many books i say that but i will never change what's also crazy is that 16 of these books are the first books of a series. And I don't know, I just finished the first two books in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, and I feel like consumed by that, so I don't really wanna start another series right now. Anyway, these are the three books that are not part of a series. Legends and Lattes, which a lot of people have told me it's like really comforting. People love this book. It's rated really high on Goodreads, like four point something stars. Midnight Strikes is a time loop fantasy book, which sounds pretty cool, but it has an okay Goodreads rating. I think it's like 3.6 stars. And then Kiss of the Selkie, which is technically part of the Entangled with Fae series, but each book can be read as a standalone. They're all fairy tale retellings. So I'm gonna go with one of these three. I feel like I should read this one because I've owned it the longest and it's rated so high, but my heart is telling me kiss of the selkie this one is a little mermaid retelling and it just sounds so cute and good i feel like i'm in a big romance and fantasy mood and i feel like this one will have the most romance i just read the first sentence of kiss of the selkie and it's so good it says i killed the first boy i kissed and if i ever press my lips to another's he won't be the last which is kind of funny because in Once Upon a Broken Heart, Jax, his kiss is fatal. Any girl he kisses dies. So <laughs> what are the odds that the second book I pick for this video, her kiss is fatal? Mm -hmm. 
so far I have read to page 120 and I'm really liking it so far. I basically, it's about Maisie and she has a Selkie, which is I think like half seal. So kind of like a mermaid, but seal, which is like a little hard to picture. What is a Selkie? She can shift between seal and human form. But yeah, basically the plot of the story so far is that she illegally saves this human from drowning. He's a bad guy and they were trying to like assassinate him by drowning him and she saved him. So as punishment for breaking Fey law, she has to kiss him, but her kiss is lethal. So basically they're sending her on like an assassination attempt to kill him. Yeah, I don't know like how she's gonna get out of it. Like surely he is our love interest. She ends up falling in love with him, I assume and doesn't want to kill him, but he's supposedly a bad guy. So I don't know like what the explanation is for that. And I don't know how she's going to get out of this lethal assassination kiss, but it's cool that there's like so many references to the little mermaid. Like Maisie has pink hair, like Ariel from the little mermaid has red hair. Her dad is the sea king. She's hiding out from this cruel sea queen. It's just like Ursula from the little mermaid. But even though there are so many similarities between this book and the little mermaid, there's still like its own plot and its own twist good morning so so far today i've read to page 196 and the man that Maisie is trying to kiss slash kill is holding a marriage contest to try and find a wife so Maisie enters so she can get closer to him to kiss slash kill him and the whole like marriage competition kind of reminds me of the selection if any of you guys read that book so i feel like if you liked the selection and fairy tale retellings this book is like a blend of that I just read a page 271 and I just read this quote that had me swooning. It was so freaking cute. I wish I could read it to you guys, but spoilers. And yeah, I feel like I'm finally starting to really get into the romance. The book takes like a little bit to get to the romance. I would say the beginning is more just about like Maisie and stuff with the sea queen and her legal kiss and her trying to enter this marriage competition. And we don't really get to see her interact with the male love interest until a lot more recently. So I wish like the romance came in a little bit sooner, but I understand because of the plot why it couldn't. But yeah, I'm starting to get like really, really excited for the romance now. Hello, it's like 3 p.m. and I finished Kiss of the Selkie. I liked it. I would give it four stars. I really liked the romance. The ending was so cute. I just think fairy tale retellings are so fun. Like they feel so like fairy -y and magical, but then they also get their own twists, which is cool. My only slight complaint is that I did feel like the first like third kind of dragged a little bit at parts. Like there was a few moments where I was like, okay, let's, you know, keep the pace moving. But then the second half, I like really flew through that. So if you choose to read this book and you ever feel like it moves a little slow, like stick with it because I think the second half was super good. And I also like how Maisie is, I feel like a pretty complex character. Like she likes stealing. She's like a thief in the beginning and her kiss is lethal. And she literally is being sent to kiss slash kill a man. So she has these like morally gray elements, but she's also very caring and like a very strong character. Um, and so, yeah, I just really liked her a lot. I would definitely recommend this entire Entangled with Fae series if you like fairy tale retellings that is fantasy meeting romance. Okay, what book to start next? I'm really heavily debating between two books. I'm debating between Legends and Lattes. I was like rereading the Goodreads reviews for this book and people just make it sound so good. People say it's like a cozy fantasy, which I've never experienced. I feel like every fantasy I read for the most part is like pretty intense or more on the romance side so I'm intrigued what like cozy fantasy entails and then I did post a poll on Instagram asking you guys if I should read Legend and Lattes or Dance of Thieves and Dance of Thieves did win the poll and I do trust you guys I feel like I'm gonna like Dance of Thieves more but it is a thick book we only have two more days left in this challenge so like can I realistically finish this book by the end of day seven I don't know so yeah I'm really torn I think I'm gonna read the first chapter of each of these books and then I will pick one to commit to and start Okay, I finished reading the first chapter of each of these books and this may sound silly, but I think Dance of Thieves, I'm gonna like a lot better. But I think just right now, I'm in a little bit more of a Legends and Lattes mood. Are 
I just finished page 56 and I don't know how I feel about it to be honest. I don't know if I went in with too high of expectations because this book is so highly rated on Goodreads and I have read a ton of Goodreads reviews for it and people just like love it. Like there's so many five star ratings. And so I feel like I just went into this being like, oh, it's gonna be like so freaking good. And I don't know, I feel like it's nice but that's kind of like the only word I would use to describe it so far. Like there's really just not much going on. It's basically about Viv who is an orc barbarian and she was in like the warrior life and she's getting out of that life and wants to open a coffee shop, which is a very cute concept. But so far it's pretty much just been her opening the coffee shop and that's, that's kind of it. So I don't know, I don't know how to feel about it. I just finished page 114 and uh, I still don't know how I feel with this book. People describe it as like cozy and comforting and like low stakes and feel good. And I definitely feel all of those descriptions and I see how people could really like it. But at the same time, I kind of have some beef with this book. Like I love me like a fluffy feel good romance. So I feel like a fluffy feel good fantasy would be like perfectly in my wheelhouse. But just because something is like feel good and comfy cozy doesn't mean that it should be boring. I still want there to be something unexpected or like clever or suspenseful happen. I can't decide if I want to continue reading this book for this video or switch to Dance of Thieves. I don't know what to do. Hello, it is day seven and today I started listening to The Legend and Latte's audiobook. I feel like like what I was saying that like the plot isn't like super fast paced or anything. There is some conflict that developed, but like the tone of the book is very stress free. Like even though we have some conflict now, I still feel like very relaxed, like everything's gonna work out, which I don't know is like my kind of book. I feel like I wanna be like, can't eat, can't sleep, like need to finish the book kind of feeling when I'm reading a book but I'm liking it a lot, lot more in audiobook form. I feel like it's perfect to like listen to in the background while I'm doing things. Or if I'm like on a walk and just like wanna relax and listen to something really like calm and comforting, I feel like that's really nice. And the audiobook is read by Travis Baldry, who is the author, which is pretty cool. I'm not done with it yet, so I don't wanna give a final rating yet. So far, I think I'll say like two and a half or three stars for the book, but I will give my final updated rating when I finish it on my Goodreads. I was like reading a bunch of reviews for the book just because it has such a high rating and I was like do other people feel the same way as I do and I saw some people that had some descriptions that were kind of funny and I feel like really summed up my thoughts somebody said to them it feels like reading a description of someone playing dinner dash if you know that game it's like you're a waiter and like starting a restaurant and like building it and stuff like they level up their coffee shop and now it serves pastries they level up again and now it has a musician etc and that is kind of like this book like they keep like adding to the coffee shop and growing it which is cool but it's also so like, do I care, you know? And then someone else said that they liked the book, but it's basically just your, your local Starbucks, you know? Like they didn't really add the fantasy element to the coffee shop, which I also agree with. And it wasn't something I really thought of before. Like the characters are very like cool fantasy characters. Like we've got an orc barbarian who used to be a warrior, which is really fun. So I think the characters have fun stories, but then the coffee shop is just like a normal human coffee shop. I think it could be really cool and add more fun elements if like, we had some kind of magical pastries that maybe like affected you or gave you temporary powers or something. Or this person was saying how to make the best mugs in your coffee shop for all different kinds of hands and paws, which I thought was a funny idea. But yeah, that is the end of reading fantasy for a week. This was so fun. I'm kind of sad to see it come to a close. I was looking at my TBR cart with all of my unread fantasy books and there's so many that I wanna read. All right, and with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.